everyone. Today's story is called Tom Sawyer Whitewashes the Fence. This is an extract from the book, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer by Mark Twain. The story is about a young boy who grew up along the Mississippi River and all the adventures he had. Today's story is, of course, a small extract from that book. I will read and explain the story to you. And you will find the meanings of words that may be new to you on each slide. At the end of the lesson, I have a short test for you. So let's begin with this very exciting story. Shall we? Here we go. Tom Sawyer whitewashes the fence. It is an extract from The Adventures of Tom Sawyer by Mark Twain. Let's begin. I have pictures on each slide to help you understand the story better. And as you can see, each slide has words and meanings of the words so that you can understand it even better. It was a bright summer morning brimming with life, overflowing with life. Tom appeared on the sidewalk with a bucket of whitewash and a long handled brush. Sidewalk? the part that is just near the road. So he appeared there with a bucket of whitewash and a long handled brush. He surveyed the fence, he looked at it closely and all the happiness left him and a deep melancholy settled down upon him, sadness. He suddenly felt very sad after looking at the fence. Why? Because he could see 30 yards of broad fence, nine feet high. It was really a big fence. It was nine feet high and 30 yards of it is quite a lot. One yard is equal to almost a meter. As you can see, 0 0.9144 meters, almost one meter. So you would be more familiar with meters. Uh, around 30 yards would be approximately a little less than 30 meters. That's a lot for a small boy to paint, to whitewash rather. He compared the insignificant, not important whitewashed streak. There was a small part of it, if you can see on the left of your screen, just a small part of it that was already whitewashed. And that was really not important. It was insignificant. That wasn't gonna help him much at all. So he compared that insignificant whitewashed streak with the far reaching area of unwhitewashed un fence and sat down on a tree box discouraged. It was very discouraging. He was very depressed after seeing how much of the fence he had left to whitewash. Just a little had been done so far. That storm. Jim came skipping out of the gate with a tin pail humming a song. Humming, make musical sounds with your lips closed. So he was humming a song and he came out with a tin pail. Bringing water from the town pump had always been hateful work in Tom's eyes. Tom hated that kind of work before, but now it did not strike him so. Now he didn't think it was hateful. He would rather go and bring water from the town pump than have to stand here and whitewash the fence while all his friends were having fun. He remembered that all his friends were there at the pump trading playthings. They had things with them that they were exchanging with each other, quarreling, fighting, and skylarking. That means passing time playing tricks or practical jokes, playing the fool. And he remembered that although the pump was only 150 yards off, Jim never got back with a bucket of water under an arm. He took almost one hour to get back with a bucket of water. And even then, he only got back because somebody went after him. Somebody generally had to go after him and call him back because he was so excited about being at the town pump doing all these things. That's Jim humming. 
Tom said, Jim, I'll fetch the water if you'll whitewash the fence. Oh, no, Tom, she will be very upset with me. Who's he talking about? He's talking about Tom's aunt, Aunt Polly. She, she never likes anybody. Wax them over the head with her thimble. Thimble is an object you wear on your finger when you're sewing so that you can protect your finger. You won't get poked if you wear it. And who cares for that? I'd like to know. She talks awful. She says bad things. But talking doesn't matter. I'll give you a marvel, an interesting thing. I'll give you a white alley, another interesting thing. And besides that, if you will, I'll show you my saw toe. He had a toe that had a wound on it. It was sore, it was swollen, and it was bandaged. And so he said, I can do all this for you if you whitewash the fence for me. And Jim, of course, said, no, 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 no. I'm not going to try all this because Aunt Polly will get angry with me. And Tom is trying to convince him and says, don't worry about her. She hits everyone on the head with her thimble and that doesn't hurt at all. So why worry about that? And she's always saying bad things to everyone. Who cares about talking? You know what I'll do? If you whitewash the fence for me, I'll give you something interesting in return. A marvel, a white alley. And better than that, I can even show you my saw toe. Do you think Jim got tempted? Yes, he did. Jim put down his pail, took the white alley and bent over the toe with absorbing interest. He was really excited to see that saw toe while the bandage was being unwound. Tom was taking off the bandage from his toe. And Jim was staring at it. In another moment, he was flying down the street with his pail. Tom was whitewashing with vigor, energy, new energy. And Aunt Polly was retiring from the field with a slipper in her hand and triumph in her eye, victory. But Tom's energy did not last. So what happened? Jim, of course, got tempted and came and looked at Tom's toe. And while he was doing that, Aunt Polly noticed him there. She came running out with a slipper in her hand, ready to whack him. He saw her and he took the pail and flew down the street. He was out of there immediately. And so Tom began to whitewash again with vigor, with a lot of energy. And Aunt Polly was victorious. She smiled. She said, yay, I succeeded in getting rid of that boy. And she left. Tom's energy did not last. You remember, he had a lot of energy. He was whitewashing with energy. It did not last. There you can see Aunt Polly with a slipper in her hand and Jim disappeared. He began to think, Tom began to think of the fun he had planned for this day. It was a holiday, by the way. And his sorrows multiplied. He got more and more sad. Soon the free boys would make a world of fun of him for having to work. He knew very well his friends were going to make fun of him. They would say, oh, it's a holiday and we enjoyed ourselves and we did this and we did that and we had so much fun. And what did you do? You worked. He took out his worldly wealth, his treasures that he had collected and examined it. Bits of toys, marbles and thrash, some rubbish, enough to buy an exchange of work maybe but not half enough to buy so much as half an hour of pure freedom. He had a lot of things, but not enough. So he was really sad. At this hopeless moment, when he had lost all hope, an inspiration struck him. He suddenly got very excited. He thought of something, a fantastic idea, Nothing less than a great, magnificent ray of inspiration. It was such a beautiful thought, such a wonderful thought. Excellent thought. He took up his brush and went tranquilly to work. So now he's got a new plan. He took his brush and started working. Now what's his plan? Let's see. Ben Rogers was in sight presently. So another of his friends came. Ben Rogers was his name. Ben's gait, style of walking, was the hop, skip, and jump. So Ben never walked straight like normal people. He hopped and he skipped and he jumped. He was eating an apple. He tried to draw Tom's attention. He tried to call out to Tom, say things to Tom, 
But Tom went on whitewashing, paid no attention to him. He pretended he could not see Ben. He could not hear Ben. That was his new plan. Let's see if it works. Ben stared a moment and then said, Hi, you're up for a, you're up a stump, aren't you? Now, a stump is a part of a tree that's been cut. It just lies there. No one has any use for it. So he's calling Tom that. He says, so you're, a, you're up a stump. You're, you know, in a difficult situation, you can't get out of it, isn't it? That is Ben. I tried to make him hop, skip, and jump. No answer. Again, Tom kept whitewashing, kept looking. Suppose this is a fence. He looks at it and he whitewashes. Then he steps back. He admires it. Then he goes closer. He whitewashes some more with his brush, looks at it carefully like that, moves back, admires it, and pretends that he cannot see his friend at all. Did not answer him. Tom surveyed his last touch with the eye of an artist. Then he gave his brush another gentle sweep and surveyed the result like before, like I told you, like an artist, surveyed the result, another sweep of the brush, surveyed the result, and then Ben went up alongside him. Tom's mouth watered for the apple. He wanted that apple that Ben was eating but he dare not say anything about it. But he stuck to his work. Ben said, hello, old chap, you got to work, eh? So Ben's trying to make fun of him now. And he says, you're working, aren't you? Tom wheeled suddenly, turned around suddenly and said, why, it's you, Ben? I didn't notice. Say, I'm going swimming, I am. Don't you wish you could? But of course, you'd rather work, wouldn't you? So Ben's being mean. He's saying, ha, huh, I'm going swimming. It's a holiday. I'm going swimming. Don't you wish that you could go swimming too? But of course, you would rather do your work, wouldn't you? Tom thought for a while and said, what do you call work? Why? Isn't that work? So ben is saying, you're whitewashing the fence. Isn't that work? Tom resumed his whitewashing. He continued whitewashing, you know, with that same style, like that, admiring it like an artist. Again, doing that, admiring it like an artist. And he answered carelessly, well, you are calling it work. Maybe it is, and maybe it isn't. All I know is it suits Tom Sawyer. I don't know if it's work or it isn't work. I know that I enjoy it. Oh, come now, you don't mean to tell me that you like it. So he says, oh, don't try to tell me all that. Don't try to tell me that you enjoy working. The brush continued to move. Tom kept doing that. Like it? Well, I don't see why I oughtn't to like it. I don't see why I should not like it. Does a boy get a chance to whitewash a fence every day? Isn't it special work? Who gets a chance to whitewash a fence? That put the thing in a new light. Now Ben started thinking about it differently. Tom swept his brush daintily, sweetly, back and forth, back and forth, stepped back to note the effect. Ben watching every move and getting more and more interested. Presently, he said, Say, Tom, let me whitewash a little. Tom has managed to get Ben interested. So now he says, please let me whitewash a little. Now Tom is dying to give the brush to Ben. He wants Ben to take over the whitewashing, but if he gives it to him too easily, that's going to make Ben suspicious. So he has to play along. So he says, no, no, you see, Aunt Polly's particular about this fence right here on the street, you know. But if it was a back fence, I wouldn't mind. And she wouldn't. He says, no, 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 I can't let you paint the fence. The problem is Aunt Polly is very particular about who is painting this fence because this one is facing the street. It's in the front of the house. If it was the part of the fence at the back of the house, then I wouldn't mind giving you the brush. 
Even she wouldn't mind, but you know what she's like. Then I'd like to, honestly, said, you're my friend. I would really like to give you the brush, but Aunt Polly, well, Jim wanted to do it, but she wouldn't let him. Sid wanted to do it and she wouldn't let him. She wouldn't let Sid. Now, don't you see how I'm fixed? He's saying, see, I, I really can't give it to you because Jim wanted to do it. She did not let him do it. Sid wanted to do it. She did not let him do it. Why would she let you do it? So I can't give it to you. She'll get angry with me. It has to be done very well, you know, not just haphazardly. If you were to tackle this fence and anything was to happen to it, if suppose I gave you the brush and you had to do it, you know, this is a very difficult thing and you had to do it and not do it well and something bad happened, the painting was not done properly, the whitewashing wasn't proper, then how would I answer Aunt Polly? You know how strict she is. Oh dear, I'll be just as careful. So Ben is now too interested in it. He says, please just give it to me. I'll be very careful, as careful as you are. Now let me try. Say, I'll give you the core of my apple. He says, you know, please let me try. I'll give you the core, the inside part of the apple. I'll give you all of it. He says, okay, okay. If you don't want the core in exchange for letting me whitewash the fence, maybe I'll give you whatever's left of the apple. He had taken a few bites of the apple, so it was half eaten, but he promised to give the rest of the apple to Tom in exchange for whitewashing the fence, which was now such an interesting thing for him. Do you think Tom gave it to him? Yes, he did. Tom gave up the brush, of course, not readily. He dare not give it readily. He gave up the brush with reluctance on his face. He had to pretend that he was really hesitating and he really didn't want to do it, but he had no choice. But in his heart, he was so happy and so eager. So there was reluctance on his face. He had to show that he was not happy about giving the brush to Ben, but eagerness in his heart, happiness, joy, and while Ben worked and sweated in the sun, the retired artist, the artist we're talking about is Tom, who is now retired, who's not doing his artist work anymore, sat on a barrel. Now that here, I'm pointing with my cursor, this is a barrel, okay? So he sat on a barrel in the shade of a tree close by, dangled his legs. Why dangled his legs? Because his legs would not reach the bottom when he sat on the barrel. So his legs just hung down loosely. He dangled his legs, munched his apple, his half-eaten apple, and planned the sacrifice of more innocence. While he sat there under the shade of a tree, enjoyed his apple, he planned, now when Ben gets tired, who do I catch next to whitewash the fence for me? He planned the sacrifice of more innocence. Innocence meaning innocent boys who would come to make fun of him and then stay to whitewash the fence for him because he was so clever. By the time Ben was tired, because it was really hot, he was in the hot sun painting, whitewashing. Ben was tired. Tom had traded the next chance to Billy Fisher for a kite. Billy Fisher had come along, stopped to make fun of them and got so interested that he wanted a chance to whitewash the fence. And he had given Tom a kite in return for that. And when he played out, by the time he got tired, Johnny Miller was brought in for a dead rat and a string to swing it with. And so on and so forth, hour after hour. So Tom also got a dead rat, and not just a dead rat, but even a string to swing it with. You, know, you can't just have a dead rat. You have to tie the rat's tail to a string and then swing the rat around and have fun with it. So he got that as well. So hour after hour, the same thing happened. Boys came, they stayed to make fun and then whitewashed the fence and gave Tom something in return for it. Tom got his punishment done so well. And when that's Tom, the middle of the afternoon came from being a poor Poverty-stricken boy in the morning, Tom was literally rolling in wealth. He was now so wealthy, not with money, but with all these little treasures that he had gathered from his friends. He had, besides the things before mentioned, 12 marbles. He had also collected 12 marbles, part of a Jew's harp, a musical instrument, a piece of blue bottle glass to look through, 
Now, it was interesting because it was blue in color and when you look through blue glass, everything looks blue. So boys love that. He had also collected a spool cannon, okay? And also a key that wouldn't unlock anything. It was just a key, a fragment of chalk, a small little piece of chalk a glass stopper of a decanter, a glass bottle in those days had those glass stoppers which were fitted into the bottle like that, not a cap. He got that as well. He got a tin soldier which had a leg missing, of course. A couple of tadpoles, not even frogs, but tadpoles. Six firecrackers, only six of them. A kitten with only one eye, poor little thing, had lost an eye, I wonder how. A brass doorknob, doorknob, you know, the little round thing that helps you to hold the door when you push and pull it. A dog collar, but no dog, only the collar of a dog. The handle of a knife, but no knife, just the handle. Four pieces of orange peel, the cover of an orange the peel, just four pieces of it. And a dilapidated, that means old and wrecked, old window sash, a piece of cloth that you tie the curtain with window sash. So that's all he had gathered and it was great wealth for a boy. He had had a nice good idle time. Idle meaning he did nothing. He just sat in the shade of a tree, munched an apple, had fun, plenty of company, maybe even more than he would have had at the town pump. And the fence which was supposed to receive one coat of whitewash it was supposed to be whitewashed once, had now received three coats of whitewash. Three times it had been whitewashed. And if he hadn't run out of whitewash, he would have bankrupted every boy in the village. He would have left every single boy in that village without his treasures, okay? So unfortunately, the whitewash got over after three coats. Otherwise, it would, the fence would have got the fourth coat, the fifth, and maybe 10 also and he would have got richer and richer. Tom said to himself that it was not such a hollow world after all. It was not so painful and depressing to be alive in that world. He had discovered a great law of human action without knowing it, namely that in order to make a man or boy covet a thing, if you want someone to desire something, if you want someone to want something with all his heart, what do you need to do? You only need to make that thing hard to attain. It is only necessary to make the thing difficult to attain. So if someone wants to go to town shopping, and it's very easy to go to town shopping, you make it hard for that person. And then the person will want it more and more. The harder it is to get something, the more the person tries to get it normally. Okay. So that's Tom. I hope you enjoyed the story. Let's see if you can remember the meanings of these words. They're just some of them that we came across in the story that I just did with you. I hope you enjoyed the story. And if you did, please read the entire book. You will really enjoy it. And when you are finished with the adventures of Tom Sawyer, maybe you can move on to the adventures of Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. That's good too. Do you remember what gate means? I have two options for you. Do you think it means late or style of walking? Yes, it means style of walking. What about daintily? Does it mean carefully or carelessly? Carefully. The third one, fragment, small piece or large hop? Small piece. What about covet? What does it mean? Does it mean hate or desire? It means desire. Jia? Play or make fun of someone? Make fun of someone. Decanter? Glass bottle or hop, skip and jump? Glass bottle. So with that, we've come to the end of today's lesson. Well, I do hope you enjoyed it and it will help with your studies. Until we meet again, do take care of yourselves. Cheerio.